Hey everybody, this is Kevin for another episode of Lazy Literature. I haven't posted anything for the past couple of weeks. Uh, that's been because of two reasons. The first is that the book I'll be talking about this week, The Power Broker by Robert Caro, it's a pretty long book and it took me longer than I anticipated to read all the way through it. It clocks in at just over 1300 pages. I know it's over a thousand and it was long and small print on big pages. So it took me about two weeks up until yesterday to read all the way through it. And then also to be honest, I'm an eighth grade language arts teacher and the school where I work, they asked me to be on a committee for the school reopening process. And that did take up a good amount of my time last week with the meetings, but then also all of the logistics to think about and what it would take from the community to reopen the school district. And that's something I'm thinking about a lot right now. And to keep being honest and frank, I enjoy doing these videos because while I don't necessarily want to talk publicly about the way that I feel, because that's just my personality. And I also think from my experiences, that's good for me. And it's a sign of maturity that I'm a little more self-contained and I'm not necessarily just blurting out everything that I'm thinking. But what I wanted to say is that I enjoy doing these videos because they give me something to think about and plan for and try to do to the best of my ability. Whether I'm doing these to the best of my ability I still think that remains to be seen, but regardless, what I'm trying to say is that I enjoy doing this and they make me happy. One thing that didn't necessarily make me happy over the duration of 1300 pages was The Power Broker by Robert Caro. I understand Robert Caro is a Pulitzer Prize winning author because of this text, yet, you know, um, it is a very in-depth and comprehensive biography of Robert Moses, who worked for, with, or over the state of New York as the commissioner for the Parks Commission. And, you know, the power broker is a comprehensive and in-depth look at a guy, to be honest, I did not know about until I heard about this book. And I think The Power Broker is a long and extensive retelling of almost every significant event from this guy's life. And the reason that it's important to read this book is that it gives the readers a good idea of what it's like to work in state government at the time that Robert Moses was working for, with, or strangling the state of New York and all of its public parks. And I think it's important to read something like The Power Broker because while Robert Caro is telling readers about Robert Moses, he is also bringing in every other significant historical person, character, however you want to call them, that were around at that time. And these were people from Governor Al Smith of New York. Uh, the Roosevelt family plays a very large role in the story of Robert Moses. And then at the end of the book, it largely talks about the Rockefeller family and how originally they would work with people like Robert Moses, but then at a certain point they weren't on friendly speaking terms or anything like that. To give a brief overview that's not 1300 pages long, 
the power broker is about a guy who was incredibly influential and effective at building parks and what we now see as public service projects. So Long Island State Park, that's because of Robert Moses. Robert Moses is largely responsible for all of the recreational areas that are currently in New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, all of the neighborhoods in the Bronx. And Robert Moses is a guy who came from a very good family. He went to Yale and he was very accomplished as a student. And after that, he seemed to have a real passion and commitment to improving the lives of other people. But by working in New York state government, he became a little jaded. And I don't know how else to describe it. He became a little bit more realistic in what he thought he could accomplish. And over the rest of his life, the power broker describes how, I don't know, it's like he would strong arm people and he was very dismissive of people and he really saw divisions in class and economic status as accurate markers for how people should be valued and treated and the power broker is a really good example of how you can take an individual and see all of their passion all of their zeal for the cause that excites them when they're younger and as they get older, they kind of become a scumbag a little bit. And it's almost the irony that they kind of turn into the person, character, or thing that they might have despised when they first started off in their career. And my main complaint about the power broker is that Robert Caro to tell an accurate story about Robert Moses' life has to talk about all of these peripheral people that were absolutely involved. But sometimes you'll read two or three pages about a person and then that's it, they disappear. And I cannot recall why they were so important. Now, because of that, it's hard for me when I have a 1300 page biography or a similar book to stay engaged all the way through. And you know, that could be because of car horns that are going off in my parking lot, or it could just be that the book feels fragmented. So I could read a few pages of a chapter and feel like I understand this minor New York City Parks Commissioner who might have once had a disagreement with Robert Moses. And then when I'm at the end of reading about that guy's life and involvement with the person being examined, Robert Moses, I put the book away and it doesn't really feel compelling for me to keep reading. I had to force myself to read The Power Broker I do feel like I gained something from the experience. I could say that I learned something, but I think you can kind of track where the book is going within the first 400 or 500 pages. I've you've used this word a ton talking about this. Um, it's comprehensive, it's in depth. You're gonna learn a lot about New York and all of the interesting you know, historical landmarks that are there, the Triborough Bridge, uh, Jones Beach, all of those fun monuments that, you know, sometimes we think it's just about hard work and people wanting better lives for other people and the neighbors that live in their city. Sometimes those monuments can be the extensions of vain men and women who are you know kind of using the public good to advance their own agenda and i'm not saying that happens all the time but you could take a look at an example 
like Robert Moses and kind of see how this can happen over and over again. I think I'm going to wrap this up. There might be something going on in my parking lot, the parking lot of the apartment building where I live. So maybe I'll go check that out. The plan for next week is that I'm going to review, hopefully recommend Defending Jacob by William Landay. It's nice. It's fun. It's shorter than what I just read. And I'm already having a great time with it. And just to be clear, I don't think the power broker is lazy in any regard. As far as it's writing, you just have to be aware. Do you want a 1300 page biography? And if you do, I think Robert Caro and the story of Robert Moses, that should be a good read for you. Have a good day, everybody.